Thank you so much for coming along today to this um, webinar. It's one that I'm really, really excited about myself, um, and it's about crowdfunding. And um, I've worked in small business in the past, and I found that um, crowdfunding was a really useful tool. Um, and I think it could be really beneficial to food hubs, just even if you just have it in your back pocket as something to call upon in the future. And so in this session, I'm going to give a really, really brief introduction of what the session is going to be about. And then I'm going to hand over to Anna from Crowdfunder. And we're really lucky to have Anna today. She's a, um, a crowdfunding coach with Crowdfunder, which is a platform based in the UK. She's going to tell us about crowdfunding, what it is and tips and stuff. And then we've got sort of 20 to 30 minutes at the end where we can just have um, any questions and stuff. Um, if you have any questions while we're going along, perhaps if we could just pop them in the chat box and then we can come to them at the end. Um, does that work for everyone? So what is crowdfunding? Um, you probably all heard of it. It's um, an alternative way of raising capital where you ask lots of people to do each donate a really small amount of money and then you can get um, a bigger amount. And Anna's going to cover this in far much more detail later, but just to give you a little bit of a taster, um, the benefits of crowdfunding are much more diverse than just raising money. Um, it gives you a route to capital that you might not have access to through traditional methods such as a bank loan. Um, it's a really, really great opportunity to tell your story about your food hub um, and uh, all the nitty gritty of what goes on. And it, it, in the same respect, it's a really great way of connecting with your community, especially if you get customers who um, contribute to your crowdfunding campaign, they feel part of your hub and then they're probably likely to be more like a very good advocates of your hub and recommend you to other people. And if you do uh, rewards based crowdfunding, which Anna will tell us what that means later, it's a really good way of testing out new product ideas um, as your rewards. So what? who are Crowdfunder? Crowdfunder are a UK-based um, crowdfunding platform and um, they have very similar values to OFN, which is brilliant, and probably very similar values to a lot of you too. And if you look on their website, their number one mission, which I really like, is to, um, to tackle society's challenges. Um, I think that's a really great mission. And like OFN, um, their support team is very people driven. So if you email them, like if you email us, you get a real person at the end of the email, which is brilliant. So I'm going to hand, hand over to Anna and it's all over to you. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to just apologize now because I've got a very lively foster dog who will maybe get lively when my husband returns back from the dentist any minute. And I think I've just heard him. So I was just about to cue the worst time to arrive home, but sorry in advance. Um, so thank you for the, very much for the introduction. And it's really, really nice to be here. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, and talk to you a little bit more um, about the details of, of crowdfunding. So I'm going to run through how what rewards based um, crowdfunding is and how it works, and perhaps some of the benefits that you might find if you do crowdfund, and also the three steps um, to success that us um, coaches at Crowdfunder um, use to help people complete their crowdfunding campaigns successfully. So just to give you a bit of um, uh, a background on more on Crowdfunder UK, we were set up in 2013 um, by a gentleman called Rob Love, and um, we were set up to enable people across the UK to, to raise money for projects that matter. And um, as Louise said, that the concept of crowdfunding is essentially raising finance through lots of small donations or pledges, like we call, um, from, from the crowd. You can typically uh, run a crowdfunding campaign for anywhere between two and eight weeks, but the sort of optimal time that we suggest is around four or five weeks, um, and that's where we sort of see the, the best performing campaigns. Um, 
We are the, the UK's biggest rewards uh, based crowdfunding platform. And to sort of give you a few numbers to equate, uh, you know, to, to understand how big we are at the moment, um, we have about 200 crowdfunding projects added to our website every single day. And to date, um, we've raised, uh, well, projects on our website have raised over 136 million pounds when I checked yesterday. Um, so, it's yeah phenomenal what we've done in the last sort of few years, um, and we see all sorts of projects on our website. So we see things like businesses, um, films, theatres, political campaigns, um, uh, food hubs, um, publishing, and one thing that unites um, most of the projects is that they're, they're there um, to sort of try and tackle society's challenges. Now, prior to Crowdfunder, um, Rob Love actually had a, a sort of quite a social entrepreneurial background too. He was involved in River Cottage with Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. Um, he helped set it up in um, 1998. And I'm sure lots of you have heard of um, River Cottage, but their ethos is really about sort of slow produce, seasonal, local, organic and wild. Um, and obviously there's a real big um, drive on sustainability as well. Um, so one of the campaigns you might have heard of is the, the fish fight campaign, which was aimed to sort of um, end the waste of fish caught, killed and thrown back into the North Sea in 2010. So it's definitely safe to say that, um, yeah, Rob's got a sort of social entrepreneurial background um, and especially now with Crowdfunder UK. And as Louise said, it, it goes from our ethos, but also we're sort of down to the, the way that we work. Um, we are based in Newquay. We've got lots of offices around the, the UK, but um, we're mainly the sort of biggest office is, is Newquay and that's our headquarters. And um, yeah, we've got just a very, um, I guess a, a company culture that might be different to a normal tech company. Um, my, my lunch breaks pre-COVID were going for swims with the CEO and we, we definitely like to um, work as a team. We're really people driven and, and that's why we you know, do what we do. So um, hopefully that gives you a bit of a context of, of where um, we've come from. So we've got lots of examples that I'm going to run through today, but what I thought um, might be quite nice is to start off with a video of a crowdfunding project that um, they crowdfunded in November 2020, um, and they were growing, um, going to sort of set up a bakehouse and cookery school. So I will sh hopefully share this with you. And this is just a really nice example of um, a typical um, crowdfunding project for a sort of foodie um, style enterprise. The Sidwell Street Bakehouse is part of St Sidwell's Community Centre. We are a sourdough community micro bakery and we offer volunteering and work experience placements. We set up the Sidwell Street Bakehouse to provide voluntary and work experience placements in a growing industry. We aim to make real sourdough bread as affordable as possible. It's been really important for us to ensure that we almost reclaim back the sourdough from the artisan bakeries who've taken it and elevated the prices and we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to buy it because it's a really important food staple. A great way of overcoming that is by inviting people in either to volunteer or come in one of the bread courses. I'm Callum, I've been volunteering for two years in the bakery. And I've been making sourdough, cinnamon swirls, and I had a good time as well, definitely. I enjoyed it. So when you're getting bread from us, you're not only having something that we hope is really delicious, but also helping people learn a new skill. We have a really tiny space here at St Sigurds Community Centre, it's 2.7 by 3.7 metres and about one third of that is an oven. Now we can only fit 
one or two people in here at a time. Be able to offer more, more placements and more in-depth experiences for people. We want to move to a larger space that will enable us to do that and also to produce more bread, more treats and bring in more income for the community centre as well. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again because it's gone a bit funny. So rewards-based crowdfunding, as we touched on earlier, crowdfunding is about raising, you know, a set target from lots of small donations. And what rewards-based crowdfunding is actually... Um, how it's different is that you're offering something in return for someone's financial contribution. So for example, in that, in that um, video we've just watched, they might um, offer a loaf of bread as a reward or maybe um, a baking workshop as an experience. And the reason we offer different types of rewards um, is so that people can um, pledge at different price points and it actually gives them the opportunity to spend a bit more um, than you know just a, a donations only campaign. This is a lovely example of a project that crowdfunded in August 2019. Um, it was a zero waste shop in Portsmouth and they raised just over £40,000 with an amazing 905 supporters um, through their crowdfunding campaign. Um, I wanted to sort of show you this slide just to give you an idea of um, the types of rewards that people can offer. There, there's so much scope for, um, I guess, creativity when you're offering rewards. So whilst they've got things like the membership, um, they might have things like the, the shopping kit that they've um, that they're going to have um, as part of their, their business, as well as masterclasses in macaroon making. And, um, and also they've offered things such as the, a sponsorship reward for um, a local business to get in, involved in. They've also thought about all the audience that they're going to be reaching out to. So they've got the, whilst it's a community shop, that is definitely what um, the project is all about. But actually, they've got a out of town reward for those people that they know in their network might be interested in the project, but actually aren't going to be local to the, the shop. Here are a few examples um, of sort of projects that have crowdfunded, and I think all of them are on the Open Food Network, um, if, unless anything's changed. Um, but as you can see, the they're all raising sort of different amounts of money. So Top Right was a, another zero waste shop and they raised just over 5,000 um, pounds. The, the Freedom Bakery um, raised just over 16,000 pounds for their crowdfunding project in Glasgow. And Lockervore has, they crowdfunded back in 2015 and raised again um, around 17,000 pounds. Soul of Discretion is based in Plymouth. It was a social enterprise um, to protect the marine uh, environment through um, a dedicated supply chain for ethical, ethic, ethically um, caught fish. And they actually had a much bigger raise that was 140,000 um, pounds with 70 supporters. So there's definitely lots of examples um, for you to go and have a look at to inspire you to, to see what they've done, how much they've raised, so that if you do decide to crowdfund down the line, um, you can yeah, take inspiration from them. Um, it, it's not about reinventing the wheel with crowdfunding, so definitely use these examples um, to, to help you. So in terms of making your crowdfunding campaign successful, there's a sort of three key ingredients to make a really good project, um, team, network, and story. Whilst you don't have to have all three of these, um, it's definitely worth having two of them and then maybe working on the third one. So it, it, it's something that maybe in the planning stages, you can develop the third one, but it's just important to, um, 
like for example team I would always recommend doing it with, within a team um, it just helps uh, spread the workload um, it means that you've got sort of people around you if it's a bit stressful um, or you've got people around you if um, if and when you need to celebrate so it's always nice to have a couple of um, friendly faces to to help you along the way The way to set up a crowdfunder is um, nice and straightforward. Um, first of all, the key thing to do would be to sign up to crowdfunder.co.uk. And then it means that you're in our world, you'll start receiving um, special advice, um, sort of specialized advice from our team to help you crowdfund. Um, the next thing to worry about is creating your page. So we, we watched uh, the Sidwell Bakehouse's video earlier. It's, it's great to have videos on your page, but other than that, we also want to sort of, um, we want to sort of see your, your story. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about it in a moment. And then you'll offer a range of rewards that people can pledge in return for um, the rewards. Once your project is ready, you will go live on the Crowdfunder UK website. You will be given a unique URL for your project, and that's what you will share with your, your friends, family, and your wider network. When you crowdfund, you'll be asked to choose a funding method. There's either all or nothing or keep what you raise, or it's sometimes known as flexible funding. All or nothing means that you would set, um, say, £5,000 as a target and you need to hit that £5,000. And if you don't hit that £5,000, all of your current supporters um, of the crowdfunder will be refunded and you won't uh, be able to, you won't receive anything at all. The other option, which is definitely the, I guess, less stressful, maybe a bit safer option is the keep what you raise uh, method. And that means that anything that you do raise from the crowd, um, you, do, you do get to keep um, minus any fees that get taken. Whilst um, there's benefits to both of them, all or nothing's really good if you've got to raise, say you're uh, raising money for a vehicle for your zero waste shop and the vehicle costs £10,000. And if you don't raise £10,000, you won't be able to um, buy this vehicle. Then um, all or nothing is quite a safe method so that you can, you know, that you only have to um, move forward with the project if you do raise, raise the full amount. Whereas keep what you raise, um, it might be good if any money that you raise will be useful for your project. Um, it's, Often, um, it's often that all or nothing projects do actually raise more because there's a bit of an urgency on yourself, but also when you're reaching out to supporters that you've got that drive, you, you have to hit that set target. Um, but keep what you raise can be a really good option for people. Um, the only thing to bear in mind with keep what you raise is that if you've offered rewards, you have to make sure that you can deliver those rewards no matter how much you raise. So why would anyone crowdfund? Um, firstly, obviously people are here because crowdfunding is a really good way to raise finance for your, your project, but there are actually loads of other uh, benefits to it. So for example, if you're testing some kind of new product um, for your enterprise out, it can be a really great way to validate it, um, make sure that there's an appetite um, for it. It's also essentially a marketing campaign. So four weeks that you're going to be raising um, lots of awareness um, for, for your project. So it's a really good way um, to, to raise, to get noticed by a wider audience. I think that food hubs are really well set up for this because, you know, often it is to do with sort of local community and sharing it on a, on a crowdfunder definitely gets the word out there, which is great. Louise mentioned this earlier, but it's a really fantastic way to build advocates. Um, I am a very, very good example of this. Um, 
recently I pledged on a, a local project to me. So I'm based in Falmouth um, in Cornwall and in the next door town, there was a borrow not buy shop being set up. So you can go and rent uh, bits of DIY equipment um, for your house, but you don't have to buy them. And I thought it's a fantastic idea and also really nice that it's in my community. So since I heard about it, I pledged on it, but I also shared with all of my local friends in Falmouth. So I have sort of basically become a little ambassador for their brand. And um, that's definitely something that happens when you, um, when you, when you crowdfund, you'll, you'll, you'll get a, a really engaged audience. And you actually also might create connections with people you didn't expect to as well. Crowdfunding um, is, is challenging <laughs> and there are bits of it that you might not have done before. It's sort of, sort of like running a mini business. Um, so there are quite a lot of things that you will learn um, along the way. We've got lots of support to help you, but they can be really good skills um, for, that you can transfer to future um, projects. And finally, another benefit, um, which is a, a really fantastic one, is that we've got a range of national and regional partners that have pots of money that they can uh, that they want to distribute to certain types of projects uh, based on location or even the the uh, the type of the project. And they, you can get up to, I think the mo the most is sort of up to ten thousand pounds from each of these partners or from a partner. Um, towards your project and obviously there's certain criteria in terms of the way that you crowd like have to crowdfund and things like that but it's it's a much simpler way than um, a normal grant process we try to make it part of the crowdfunding process so it's as quick and easy as um, we can make it so um as I said, they are grants. So with rewards-based crowdfunding and the extra funding, there's nothing to pay back. It's not a loan. You know, you're not selling any any of your you're not not selling equity of your business away. It, it is um, money that you can sort of put straight into um, your food hub. Whilst there's no uh, upfront costs to join crowdfunder and to set one up. If your project is successful, then there are fees that are attached um, to this. So there's a platform fee, there's a card payment fee, and there's an extra funding fee, if you are lucky enough to get extra funding from one of our partners. What I would say is, if you've say got a, a target of 5,000 pounds to put six or 7% aside um, to cover any fees, um, just so that you, you, you've mitigated that. If you are crowdfunding as a consequence of uh, the coronavirus pandemic, um, so if that's sort of what has led to needing to crowdfund, then there are zero platform fees at the moment. Um, so that's a nice bonus um, for you. We break down the crowdfunding journey into three sections, planning, create, creating, and running. And I will share with you afterwards a online learning course that um, is really helpful. There's a, there's a quick in introduction followed by these sort of three sections. And they really do give you all the tools to, to succeed. And there's no, um, you just need to sign up and it's, um, or enroll for free. There's nothing, um, you know, there's no commitment if you decide to have a look. So it's worth just doing the introductory course just to familiarize yourself with crowdfunding and see whether it's something that you, you would consider now or, or down the line. So in terms of planning, this uh, the focus is for this sort of stage is finding out who's going to be interested in your project. So the audience that you're going to reach out to. The great thing is that if, if lots of you are sort of established food hubs, you've already got that, you know, parts of that audience already, um, I guess, clear in your mind. 
but this exercise is still really important to, um, to develop this network basically as wide as possible. Um, we always say start from the middle and grow outwards. So start with the people closest to you, so your family and friends, and then you'll reach out to people in your wider networks. Um, and yeah, so this is a really useful tool to see how big your, your reach is. And once you've done that, you can transfer it onto a spreadsheet if you like, or um, or just um, some people just like to have it on a big piece of paper so that um, they have it everywhere they they go when they're crowdfunding. But this is a sort of um, a tool that will be developed on um, throughout the crowdfunding process. So even when you're live and your 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 project's launched your live crowdfunding, you can still be adding to this network spreadsheet when you make new connections. That planning section um, is, is definitely the foundation to a successful campaign. It's definitely the most boring part of crowdfunding, but without that, you, you've, you, know, you don't have a solid foundation to work on. So I definitely recommend putting that time in early for the, the planning. The next thing is creating, and this is the, the more fun part of crowdfunding, is making um, your page to, to show, like to tell people about your story and why you need the funding at the moment. The way that you set up your crowdfunder, this is an example page. Um, it essentially asks you a question and you need to put the answer in. So what's the name of your project? And this is called Forget Me Not Eat New Keys Eco Florist. Um, on the right hand side, there's loads of little videos from our um, lovely coach, Sammy, uh, to help you along the process. But if you do get stuck, then we've got, you know, I'm available and also our customer support team, Christine and the gang, <laughs> uh, are sort of there to help with technical um, queries that you might have. But hopefully it's quite straightforward going through, um, as you can see on the top, from you to I think it says financials at the end, I haven't cut, it's cut off for me. Um, with your crowdfunding page, it's essentially a, a sort of shop front for your, your idea. So the, the more you can um, break it down for people so that, you know, while some people will know about your food hubs, there might be people who, who've never heard of you before. So it's really good to have all the information really clear. Um, on your page so that people um, know what, what, you're, what you're trying to achieve. And I mentioned earlier about the, the extra funding being part of uh, the crowdfunding process. When you put the details into your crowdfunding project page, then um, you will, one of the sections is extra funding. And this is basically our uh, dev team trying to, uh, or tech team trying to match you up with possible partners. So um, it's part of the process. And then afterwards, you'll, it'll, on the right hand side, as you can see, it will pop up with um, potential partners that might be um, available for your, your project. And finally, it's the third section running, which is about Obviously, when you launch your crowdfunding project, you need to let people know it's there, it's on the website um, and where to find it. Now, instead of reaching out to everyone on day one, we suggest or we highly suggest um, that you spread it out over the course of the duration of your campaign. Um, so this is an example of your crowdfunding project is running for four weeks. First of all, it's getting your team to, to make their first pledges um, and then reaching out to your team's friends and family and then so on and so forth. We like to sort of use an example of an, um, an empty restaurant, which seems a bit inappropriate now with all the restaurants in <laughs> probably over uh, quite a lot of long way um, being closed. But if you see an empty restaurant, you aren't um, going to be interested in going into it. Um, if you see there's lots of people in the restaurant, um, it suddenly gets more and more popular and then there's a, 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 um, a queue outside the door and people are really interested. And that's a bit like your, 
your, your crowdfunding project. If you think of like the local businesses or um, the local people, they, they need to see that other people are interested in the project and believe in the idea before they are ready to commit. So for example, that's why you want your friends and family to support before you reach out to people that you know less well. Um, so it's really important um, to have that foundation of friends and family before re reaching out to people you, you know less well, so that there's that proof that, you know, there are people that really um, like, the, like the idea. As I said, we are, um, we're here to support. We have got um, a team of coaches um, and we've got lovely Christine there who has a team of customer support um, who they're amazing and they're you know, on hand to help with any tech issues. But in terms of resources, um, we offer lots of different things to help you get started, uh, depending on how you'd like to learn. So for example, we've got online guides and courses and the, the online course, which I'll share with you, the Learn platform is really interactive. So it gives you um, videos, uh, quizzes and other things to, yeah, to, to interact with. Uh, the guides are really helpful. We also have an accelerator course, which is actually currently running. The next one's not for a couple of months, but you can sign up on our website for it. And that is a two week course um, hosted by either me or Bertie or Chloe. And um, it's essentially two weeks. It's hosted on Facebook and we, we give you all the tools to sort of create a successful campaign over the course of the two weeks. And the thing that we really enjoy, and I think the, the bits of it that are really helpful for um, those who are part of it is that that peer-to-peer -peer support um, and they can you can interact with other people who are who are still the, the same part uh, or the same stage as the journey as you and like everything there's no commitment so you can join the accelerator and if you decide actually I, I think I need to wait a few months before I crowdfund that's absolutely fine too. Um, and there's lots of other things and such as one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you reach out to me, I can definitely see if there's capacity to, to take you through the crowdfunding journey. Um, and I will also share all the resources to help you. Um, so I can share my email address afterwards. This is an example of what that learn platform looks like. It um, breaks it down into lots of uh, manageable chunks because we know there is a lot to learn when crowdfunding. Um, and yeah, by the end of it, you'll definitely be crowdfunding experts. So hopefully that's about fine in terms of timing, but the, the next steps before we go into a Q and A would be, to go and have a look at the website, you can explore all of the, the projects that are previously crowdfunded and also who are crowdfunding at the moment. Um, you can, yeah, if you type in the keywords, you can break it down into sort of the, the food. There's, I think there's actually a food and drink section. So go and have, have a look um, at other people's and see what's worked and what hasn't worked and what you like and what you don't like for if you want to crowdfund. And also please do feel free to reach out to me if you've got um, questions about crowdfunding or if you've got, you know, if you do want to crowdfund, I'm more than happy to, in addition to the projects I've shared today or showed you today, I can sort of get, get you five or six project examples to help you so you can, um, yeah, so you can look at those and take inspiration for when you start your crowdfunding journey. Um, and that's it from me. So thank you very much. And I would love to take some questions. Thank you, Anna. That was really, really, really interesting. Um, I just wondered, has anyone got any burning questions? Oh, well, hopefully people have got some ideas and some questions. Um, just maybe um, pipe up because I don't think there's any in the chat yet. Anna, I've got a quick question, please. Yeah, Rachel, hi. Hi. Um, so if if you did the keep what you raise mm -hmm. funding, is there any obligation then to raise the rest of it? I mean, the people that have 
pledged presumably will be expecting the result that they were hoping for. Yeah, so that is one thing to consider with a keep what you raise option. It, it It's only if the project will go ahead, no matter how much you raise, because you might be, you know, using other funding opportunities or, you know, that you, you can still make the project happen with not the full amount. Um, it's also good to bear in mind that you will have to, though, deliver those rewards that you've you've sold. So it's what 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 is your your project just out of interest? No, I was thinking more in general terms. Um, so if you went back to the, your um, vehicle um, example, so if you did keep what you earn and you say you got eight out of 10,000, but you had some other ideas of how to get the extra two, then is that acceptable to the people that have, would that be acceptable that there's, a, that there's then a delay for you to raise those extra two? Um, I think people are very understanding. So it's, it's they kind of, the people who support your crowdfunder sort of want to see it happen. And I think they're pretty, um, in general, I think very understanding if, for example, you say, okay, great, we've got eight out of 10,000, but you know, it's gonna then put a delay on the project for a few months for us to raise that other 2,000. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that that's what I'd say. But if, for example, you just don't think you'll be able to get funding from anywhere else, then all or nothing is quite a good option because you, you know, you don't, have to deliver any of the rewards even though it's frustrating because you um you know you've worked hard to get to a certain point um but with that i'd say if you choose a target that's quite realistic and achievable um if you talk to any coach at crowdfunder that's probably the thing that we talk about well, i definitely talk about that a lot is just you know don't aim too high only you know choose a target that is what you need to make it happen is the minimum that you need not i want to you know set up shops all around the uk actually this is just going to make me do the first part of the project and then you can actually crowdfund 6 months down the line if you um for example yesterday i was talking to a project that she does wellness workshops but she um she crowdfunded in july 2019 yeah J july 2019 and she um, now really wants to sort of step up um, and she, so she's crowdfunding again for the next stage of her business. So you can do that as well. Um, That's interesting. I didn't realize you could have a second bite at it. Yeah, yeah. And even if you, even if you were to sort of not be successful, you could actually, um, you know, lots of people, you know, try it maybe the time wasn't right or or they kind of misjudged their audience, for example. Um, and then you can you can try it again. You can regroup. <laughs> like maybe, I don't know. Re yeah, just try to try and get over the fact that you had that stumble and just try again. Um, so or, or or other people um, go from doing a rewards based campaign to maybe get moving into doing an equity-based crowdfunder sort of 12 months later or six months later. Um, so. Super, thank you. You're very welcome. Kate, I saw you on mute a while back. Did you, did you have a question you wanted to ask? I did, yeah, sorry. And then my daughter started chattering, so I really need to voice <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to know, can you can you run it at the same time as um, his other um, funding? initiatives i mean if because we at the moment we're talking to a couple of people about potentially funding this but could you run it if you're doing some other fundraising as well what is is it for the exactly the same project and is it what and pretty much yeah we're, we're a food hub so at the moment we're um we've been a bit homeless so um we we outgrew our original premises and then we moved to another premises which is free because of covid then we moved again to one of our team's um, empty pub and then we've had to move out of that. And we've actually gone back to our original premises, but we're in the auditorium now. Um, so we're secure there until June. But what we haven't got is any storage. Um, so what we'd really like is either some storage or, or a van would be amazing so that we could keep all the crates and we kind of almost be mobile. Um, 
but we you know without without fundraising we're not going to be able to do that but I know um some of the the things that I've looked at it's we, we can only be fundraising like at one time so would we need to break it down to funding for storage funding funding for so like I guess in theory you could fundraise for lots of things at the same time but you're you're then diluting your message and you're sending people to lots of different places. So I would say to try and focus on one part of it at a time. Um, are you, have you started your fundraiser already? Um, it, no, we haven't. So it, 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 we're actually looking, so the, the crowdfunding would be to the community, but we're kind of like talking to the council about um, those sort of funds. So, um, okay, out, so, it, so that so would be- They're different fun. sources. Okay, so that would be more of a grant sort of situation. Yeah. That that doesn't like affect you crowdfunding because, you know, that's actually kind of a different um because it's like direct with the the council, you're just having that sort of direct relationship. You can still crowdfund at the same time as that. You you know, you've got no um you don't have to wait till afterwards and then you can um yeah, so and actually lots of people do do that that some grants you have to raise a certain amount to get um unlock that that grant um yeah even off crowdfunder like even though that's a sort of requirement as well for crowdfunders so lots of people do do that that they're they're getting a grant from elsewhere but they're they're crowdfunding as well um yeah um, a couple of them that i looked at had like you know match funding i know in my in my other job We've had that so we've received money from like one put in money from somewhere and then we've been able to apply for, for like match funding from like the, the council it was at the time so mm -hmm. just trying to think of the order to do things it would be great if we could do crowdfunding and then maybe top up if, mm -hmm. with other sources maybe yeah whereabouts are you based um in kent in folkestone okay um if you have have a look at our extra funds as well to see if there's if you google extra funding crowdfunder um i can't think of any at the top of my head that but have a look because we've got 70 or so partners um mm -hmm. so there might be something that you can have a match fund within that crowdfunding realm oh, okay. um right. but then obviously um you know you can apply to the councils as well directly yeah. um but it's yeah good to have a certain um like having that we need to buy this vehicle or we need to 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 get this storage so that yeah. you've got that like certain amount that you have to buy and then it's quite a tangible thing for people to know that that's what you need to buy yeah uh, or, you know, that's how much you need to raise um i think it's yeah quite nice having that tangible thing um, yes because the other things like the rent and things it obviously after June I'm not sure where we're going to go yet they're going to try and keep us there but if they have lots of events on obviously we, we can't be fluid with the order cycle and things like that so we're trying to think around it and that way we could if we've got storage in a vehicle for example we could be pop up we could you know go here or there and, and it would just open up a lot more opportunities for us so yeah that's, yeah, so much to think about but it's been really interesting thank you <laughs> yeah there are there's definitely lots of different um yeah the avenues that you can go down for sure and I'm, I'm trying to think that we've got lots of sort of zero waste vans that are crowdfunded and i i'm trying to think if there are pop-ups if I, if there are any examples i can share afterwards that if i have a look thank um, you i can think of um Does anyone else have any questions that kind of oh sorry I had another one <laughs> go on right. then Kay I um, think it's really interesting what you brought up so keep with, going with the food hub we've got so many um I think we've got about 20 somewhere between 20 and 30 I think it's 26 or 27 producers at the moment can they can they donate if they're going to kind of indirectly benefit from it it's not a conflict of interest or anything they're they're fine to chip in too yeah absolutely and that's like the i guess why crowdfunding works because you can get all of them to maybe donate themselves but also um get them to they all hopefully have social medias that they can yeah. 
talk about it. So part of your, you know, I talked about the running your campaign and having that timeline, you know, on week two or three, you'll have, you know, reach out to them to post on their social media, um, which will be fantastic. And it just means that your, that the reach just expands just so quickly. If you've got 27 people, 27 um, businesses that are going to share it on their social media, but you just need to make sure it's at the right time. So when you've got, um, you know, maybe 50 or 60% of the target that you're um, hoping to get. So it looks just really like healthy and um, yeah. popular um, rather than doing it too early. So be patient with, with when you, when you use that. Awesome. Can you be flexible about the end date? So for example, if it, if I, you know, if I didn't manage it properly and it had a really slow start and then it's suddenly picked up, but I, you know, could I maybe extend it by a week if, if not many so, people, or is that you, not? So you can sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it it's it's done on a case by case basis because for example say you were to get extra funding from a partner they might have a rule of no they don't want to extend or whatever it is so if that is the case then you can reach out to our support team and i would um i would reach out about a week before so they've got time to check it um yeah. and yeah then it, usually yeah you can well not not usually that often people can get extensions but don't rely on it. And um, we talk about like a U shape when you crowdfund. There's, when you start, you're obviously gonna be getting loads of people to, to that page and there's gonna be a bit of hype because you've just launched. But then inevitably it, things get a bit quieter towards the middle of your campaign. And then towards the end, um, it starts to again pick up because people have that urgency. They know that you're about to end in a few days time. So it's it's usually the shape of a U. And um, when we extend a project, obviously in that circumstance, if you're, if you're like, oh, I, I just, you know, the first few weeks I didn't quite pick up, but usually extending a project longer means that that middle section just is, is quiet and still, it just drags on more. It doesn't necessarily mean okay that you're gonna um, you're gonna do better. It just uh, that, which is why we talk about four to five weeks being the sort of optimal time because one week is really amazing. The first week because you've got lots of um, people visiting it. The, the middle two weeks it quieter and then it picks up again in the last week. Um, so. Yeah, that middle section is always going to happen and it's always going to be quiet. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, it's just about like riding that sort of <laughs> quiet, <That wave>. just <laughs> like prepping for your last week and not worrying too much if, if there's a couple of quiet days. Awesome, thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, you say, do you have a question as you've got your hand raised? Uh, yes, please. Um, you, when you are talking about the middle bit, do you find that even with shorter campaigns, you experience that middle bit, that drop? Um, how short are we talking? So, for example, if you were to, to run it for just two weeks, to, to keep in, in, in an initial attempt to keep the urgency concentrated there is only a short time span this is it and we really need to make this happen now uh, yeah i think but two, would you have that you in there um so two weeks is like quite short so you could probably right. you could probably have a really really tiny dip in the middle like <laughs> on a couple oh, right. of days but it's not okay. as obvious uh -huh. um, some you know, recently we had a project that crowdfunded in two weeks and they raised about 13,000. Um, it's not like most people do like to have a bit more time because yeah. it gives, um, you know, your opportunity to reach out to um, all the different networks. It's obviously, uh -huh. yeah, you know, it is time consuming. So you can definitely crowdfund for two weeks, um, okay. but it just give you know make sure that you give yourself enough time to 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 tap into all of those networks yeah 
um, and things like, you know, reaching out to press, if that's something you're going to do, uh -huh. um, you might need to, you know, it, it's, it, it's not something you can hear back from within the day or uh, yeah. it's nice to have a bit of time to give them. Right. Um, Thank you for that. You're welcome. What are the, the biggest mistakes that people could make? Um, I think probably time and time again, it's like the, the lack of planning. Um, you know, there's a misconception that you, you put it up um, live on the crowdfunder site and lots of sort of lovely, sort of very rich people will come and just find it mysteriously and just particularly want to pledge on your campaign. Um, unfortunately, it definitely doesn't happen like that. You have to drive the traffic and then it, and then it might catch on. Um, so I think it's that lack of preparation um, that, that gets people, um, lack of establishing who they're, who's gonna be interested in their project. Um, because actually, um, I wouldn't say necessarily for sort of food hubs, but for certain projects, they're, their audience for their crowdfunder might be slightly different than their audience for their business moving forward. So crowdfunding is definitely friends and family, your local community and things like that. But, um, and so for example, if we take, if I go back to earlier, I talked about an out of town, a reward for a community zero waste shop. Um, and you know, it's quite easy to forget about those people in your network, your friends and family who live, um, you know, in a different county, but actually would like to support you and what you do. So um, thinking about all the, the, thinking about the audiences for your business, but also for your crowdfunder um, and just checking that you, you don't forget a pot of people that are really obvious and you just miss the mark and you didn't offer any kind of reward that would appeal to them. Um, so yeah, I would say that's that's another mistake that people make. Um, uh, I'm sure there's lots of others. <laughs> we'll find them, don't worry. <laughs> uh, Thanks. Uh, you're welcome. I've got a question just before, probably the last one before we end. Um, I've heard that some people like offer different awards. They release their awards as they go along rather than release them all at the same time. Do you think that works? Or to have like a continuously updating campaign or to just keep it static and just set all your awards at the beginning? So I hundred percent, yeah, think that it's good to add rewards while you crowdfund. And as you just mentioned about updating your page, um, when you're live, you can keep updating your, your crowdfunding page, which, you know, some, some people don't need to, but if you, you might get some really constructive feedback and it's good to reflect that on your page or something might really have really, something really exciting might happen with your, um, project and you want people to know about it and instead of just sending an update and people seeing it you want it reflected on your sort of main story page um, the good thing about adding rewards whilst you're crowdfunding is that it's quite nice for um, content with your social media to keep people interested um, and you can be quite strategic about it so for example recently a friend crowdfunded for her social enterprise that is a um, that ethical treat boxes for um, yeah, sort of specifically for women and by female led businesses in the treat boxes. Um, and she did a range of rewards and saw what worked well and what didn't work, well, not, not yeah, what, what was working really well and then added more of those kind of style rewards throughout the campaign. So she was thinking actually, she offered one of them was a Zen meditation, 20 minute meditation um, that was really easy because it was an MP4 um, that she just sent by email and they were really popular. So she then decided to do like a bit of a workshop um, that, that people could buy. So she really, yeah, kept tweaking her strategy throughout the campaign, updating her page, and, and tailoring it to what people were pledging on. Um, so 
and if you choose if you add another reward that is really good you might get people that have already supported the campaign support again so an example might be um, adding in like a launch party ticket um, that's really well priced halfway through um, and then the people who've already bought something might be like oh, okay oh I'd love to come to the launch party too I'll make a second pledge um, so it, it's it's quite good to, to do that um, uh, yeah and hopefully that answers your question yeah, thank you. Does anyone have any last minute questions? Or I, I found that really, really interesting today. And um, I just it, we talk about um, what's coming up in terms of um, OFN. We next week we're thinking about doing a follow up to this, um, where we'll be having some people talk about their experience of crowdfunding. So um, uh, who were on the platform, we kind of try and ask some people to come along. So if you like today's session, you it might be nice to um, come along and hear what they have to say and also ask them the questions if they've been at the crowd face, at the, um, at the cliff face, as it were. And then another event that's coming up is that on the 23rd um, of March, we've got our AG AGM and everyone's um, more than welcome to come along. And if again, back to big huge thank you for Anna for coming along um, today, and um, she gave us your, her contact details. So these are the contact details, and I think she, she's more than welcome to help you. And also uh, join our Facebook group for more information and updates and content about how to market and other things. So thank you so much for coming, and. Um, I'm just going to pop a feedback form in the chat and if everyone is able to just have a um, give us some feedback it's really really helpful to us um, just for planning future sessions and to know what we did right and what we did wrong so thank you so much and a huge massive thank you to Anna basically for coming so bye thank you everyone thank nice you. to meet you thank you bye Bye. 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 Such a great session. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.